Big tech was smashed like a red-headed stepchild last year in the stock market and it doesn't seem like things are improving anytime soon. Despite that, the big tech earnings are out and we are waiting to see what will happen with Apple. Year to date, the Apple stock has rallied 15%. However, the stock is still down, if you go back over the last year, 17.5%. So the big question, of course, is what is going to happen with the macro over the course of 2023. The Fed seems to at least be easing back on some of those interest rate decisions and for now it seems that there may potentially be an economic recovery towards Q3, Q4. However, a lot of this is based purely on opinion. And speaking of opinion, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, which is why when it comes to selecting your stocks, you want to make sure that you're looking at the financials, you're looking at the fundamentals and as always leaning into the historical data to make sure that you're buying companies that actually have real intrinsic value. So gathering this data can be a real pain in the ass. Ask me and ask Davi. We've been doing it for years on end and we finally decided to put everything that we know and everything that we've collected over the last couple of years into a system, into an application that makes it dead easy for stock market investors to look at the financials, to look at the scoring based on specific sets of criteria and make educated decisions to make sure that the companies that they're investing into aren't these shit companies, shit stocks that are completely completely zombified and walking around the market with no value. So if you haven't already done so, go to stockscreen.app and sign up for the waiting list. We're making this game-changing software available later this year to the public. And if you want to become a beta tester, your best opportunity to do so is to be on the waiting list. But now let's talk about Apple. Now guys, I know I'm punting this thing like hot wings at Hooters, but trust me, this software is a game changer. Go and sign up for that early waiting list, stockscreen.app. It is absolutely amazing. We still have got a little bit of a way to go. This is why we're looking for some beta testers. So definitely sign up as soon as you can. So let's look at this Apple stock. 144.29 is what it's currently trading at. And if we pull this graph back and look at the historicals, if we go back to uh, 20... 21 moving back to 2022 as well you can see the stock peaked out 160 170 and of course has since fallen back quite dramatically in fact it had a pretty big fall back here in uh, early part of 2023 to 126 and now it has started to rally somewhat again up at 144.29 so the question of course is where could the stock go so looking at the market cap we've got 2.29 trillion in market cap enterprise 2.33 trillion look at that p ratio 23.62 with a divvy of 0.64 Look at our financials, trailing 12 months, 394.33 billion. Debt, most recent quarter, 120.07 billion. Equity, uh, 50.67 billion. Net income sitting at 99.80 billion. And uh, cash on hand, this is of course the most recent quarter, 48.3 billion. Free cash flows sitting at 111.44 billion. So very, very strong on the free cash flows. Now, if we come down and quickly have a look at our cash flow statement, uh, we can see that on the operating cash flow, we've gone uh, 80, 140, 122, and 122.15 billion. Free cash flow, 73, 92, and 111. So consistent growth in free cash flow and operating cash flow looking really good. Balance sheet, 323, 351, 352, and 352. And look at that equity. They had 65, step back to 63 step back to 50 and now up at 50 again. So looking good on the asset, but the equity has been under a little bit of pressure. Now, we want, of course, leaning to the income statement because this is always, for me, very telling about what's going on with a business. Looking at the revenue, 274, 365, 394, up to 394.3 billion in the trailing 12 months. Gross profit, 104, 152, 170, and of course, 170. So the interesting thing for me is, of course, just how good the GPs are for Apple. I think a lot of investors skim over this. Apple really is producing some pretty phenomenal margins when you look at it. And I think this is something that makes them really attractive as a long-term investment. Now, if we come back here and look at the operating incomes, we can see those have been consistent and good in terms of growth. The net income has been consistent and very, very good. 57.94 uh, 94.8 and then up to 99, 99.8. Now, if you look at the shares outstanding, and this is super, super interesting. Look at the amount of shares that they've bought back. They went 170, 17.82, 17.1, 16.5, and 
one two so they've bought back an enormous amount of shares and of course this is always a solid sentiment uh, play we always look at companies where they're buying back their shares or there's insider buying this is a very good signal that a the company has faith in themselves and b that potentially the shares are maybe somewhat undervalued at that specific moment in time of course we are now looking at this after the fact so potentially the share price has moved on somewhat since then we will look at valuations but you know when you are looking at these at these shares and these stocks you want to look for this kind of pattern because it is always a really good sign then if we move down to our scoring look at the fundamentals i mean they're coming straight out the bat swinging 100 percent p ratio is 23 net margin 25 0.31 percent i spoke about those solid margins i mean if you look at the margins on the amount of turnover they're doing it is ridiculous net equity positive and shareholder dilution there has been none in the last three years look at the debt they're scoring 33 uh, debt to equity is very high 236 we'll talk about that in a second current ratio is currently sitting at uh Let's see what they're currently sitting at here. Just under one and free cash flow to debt is currently sitting at 36.89. So free cash flows is really good on the debt ratio. This means that they are able to cover some of that uh, short-term debt, of course, out of the free cash flows. In terms of long-term gearing on debt, Apple does something very unique. Apple deploys uh, debt in a very unique manner. And even though I'm very against debt in most of the companies I invest into, Apple is probably the one exception because Apple has more than enough cash on hand to cover their debt positions. But of course, what they're doing is they're making sure that they're leveraging the money in the market. So from that perspective, if you are looking at the debt ratios here, I think it is something that you have to keep in mind with Apple. Now, if we move across and look at the momentum factors, pretty much solid across the board. We've got top line, middle line, and bottom line revenue, all consistent growth. And then look at the growth factor, 100% score again. Equity, uh, return on equity, 175. Return on asset, 21.2. Return on investor capital, 55.86. And then the earnings per share, compound annual growth, 17.35%. It has been a phenomenal stock. And then looking at the dividend yield, 100% score on that dividend. The dividend pouch is sitting at... Uh, uh, very, very, very small margins if you look at that payout ratio, 22.69, uh, which is, of course, way below our benchmark of 80. Uh, dividend is stable, and there has been some growth if you look at the five-year period. And then, of course, just quickly look at some of our valuation metrics. Like I said, that PE is sitting at 23, price to book 44.63, which is pretty high. Price to sell, actually not that bad, fairly reasonable, uh, 5.51. And the price to free cash flow, I actually think is more than reasonable, 20.5. Now, if I had to value out um, a company like Apple and look at the free cash flows, I'd be willing to go to a multiple of 35. So definitely 20 is exceptionally, exceptionally well priced for this company, I think. And then if we look at the analyst ratings, we've got one sell rating, we've got 10 uh, hold ratings and seven buy ratings. So even though most of the analysts are generally sitting on a consensus of hold, there is a leaning sentiment towards buy. And I think this is indicative of uh, potentially where the stock may be heading in the future. But of course, we need to look at the valuations to determine based on current fundamentals, whether or not we're overpaying or potentially underpaying for the stock. So let's quickly just go down and look at our summary scoring. We've got fundamentals at 100. We've got debts at 33. But like I mentioned, they do deploy debt very, very smartly. So we're going to give them a pass on that. Momentum 100% and growth 100%. So I would say from a fundamental perspective, all the boxes check out well. Uh, the stock looks really good. So let's quickly do some DCF calculations. Now, of course, we are currently sitting with that P ratio of uh, 23, and I think it is 23 point, uh, let's just pick up the exact P ratio here. Exact P ratio is 23.62. Uh, so I think that is more than fair at this moment. We're going to stick with a fair target P of 23, uh, but you could probably bounce between 23 and 25 on the stock. I think you'd be coming out uh, at different valuations that are probably fair there. Look at the low growth side. The analysts are predicting upwards of 15%. Uh, however, we are going to be very conservative based on the macro. We're going to go 2, 4, and 6. Even though we do expect... Uh, a big economic recovery towards the end of the year. I think it is always best to err on the side of caution. So 2, 4, and 6 on a P ratio of 23 brings us out today at an average buy price of 127 
15. So 127.15 means that the stock may be potentially about 11.8% overvalued at this point in time. So before we come back and play around with a DCF calculator a little bit, let's quickly do a free cash flow calculation. Now, like I said, great company. I'd be prepared to pay upwards of uh, 35%, uh, 35 times uh, multiple of uh, free cash flow. I think there is a uh, a lot of reasons why you'd be prepared to pay that. I mean, if you look at the stock historically, and then of course the value of the company and their IP, it goes without saying that they are definitely worth it. So let's work on 20, uh, 25, and 30. So we are still being conservative based on the quality of the stock. And based on that calculation, we're coming out at a value of 172.85. Now 172.85, if you're looking purely at the free cash flow, means that there's potentially uh, a pricing of about 19% difference here. So essentially suggesting that the stock on free cash flow is some somewhere near between 19 and 20% undervalued. So let's quickly move back to our DCF calculator and let's play around with some of these numbers. Let's move our P ratio up to 24 and then let's be a little bit more aggressive on the top side growth. Let's go 10, uh, let's go eight and let's go six on the low side and let's see where we're coming out. 150.84, which means then if you're looking purely at uh, DCF, that you are then looking at potentially about a 4% margin. So, you know, I think it's a very, very difficult uh, call this based on value because if you're looking at the free cash flow, uh, it does potentially indicate that there is a 20% margin of safety plus the 10% that we've discounted in. Then if you look at the DCF price uh, based on whether or not you believe that this growth is too aggressive or not, could potentially be about 4% to 5% undervalued. Of course, we are, again, discounting in about 10% here. So if I look at these models, I would say probably Apple is about fairly priced at this moment. I don't think you're getting it at a bargain. I don't think that uh, based on today's pricing and today's fundamentals, you're getting an absolute steal. But I think if you look at the future value, if you look at future potential value, then you could argue there might be a real case to be made about the fact that Apple today is probably going to be very cheap if you look five or six years down the line. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at the stock. But for me personally, Apple is just one of those stable stocks. So looking at Apple, my personal strategy, if I were buying more of the stock, would just be to set a buy order on a regular basis. It'd be one of those long-term portfolio holds that you really don't worry about the short-term movements. And so consequently, it really is then a case of dollar cost averaging in based on when you can afford to buy the stock. So for me, I think it is a great company, great stock, solid fundamentals, uh, and I think it is fairly valued. But of course, I'd love to know what you here uh, have to say about this specific stock in the comment section down below. Where do you think the stock is going? Where do you think a fair value price is on the stock based on your own current calculations? And of course, if you are new to the channel, if you're new to the kind of content that we put out, we definitely don't hold back. We give it honest, we give it straight, and we give it based on pure fundamentals, facts, and logic with no sentiment involved. So make sure if you like that kind of thing, you hit the subscribe button right now. And of course, Money Tribe, please help me out by hitting that like button on this video. And if you haven't already done so, guys, go and sign up for stockscreen.app.